Hello guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, my name is Dari. Um, if you are new here, this is going to be my video series, which I will be uh, where I'll be sharing with you my journey and uh, my experience living with hydrocephalus for the past 13 years and so far. So um, I am doing this because when uh, with my experiences with hydrocephalus, I have found out that there is very little information out there that you know is available for people who do have this condition or who are living with someone that has a condition. So basically um, hydrocephalus is a condition where you get an excess of fluid uh, build up inside or on your brain and then the pressure inside your skull is building up and it can cause some really serious brain damage if it's not discovered on time and if not treated right. So my series of videos are going to be descriptive of my personal experiences. I strongly encourage all of you guys, if you do have this condition or any other condition, or if you're living with um, uh, any type of uh, um, medical or uh, any kind of disease or condition which requires medical monitoring, to please turn to a certified doctor and ask if you have any specific questions or any kind of you know, worries about your uh, personal case. This is going to be something really personal and I'm going to be uh, sharing with you uh, the experiences that I have had so far and I really hope that this will help someone on this channel um, while they're struggling with you know, looking for information because I have had this really unpleasant experience of going out and you know not having any type of resource that I can rely on for the past 13 years as mentioned. So if you saw my first video, it was more of an introduction about myself and what this whole channel is going to be about. So without any further ado, my second video is going to be about the, uh, my personal recovery and the surgeries which I had to go through 13 years ago. So first of all, let me clarify that 13 years is a long time and there are, you know, a whole new uh, set of uh, VP shunts or a whole new set also of uh, um, uh, devices that surgeons use nowadays to treat hydrocephalus. So it may not be the most perfect uh, thing that and experience that I'll be sharing with you, but it's like what I had. So 13 years ago, I was 17 at the point. Um, I went to see an ophthalmologist, an eye doctor, because I had some black spots before my eyes. And I thought that this is a condition that can be dealt with by an eye doctor. But then uh, the doctor informed me that there is nothing wrong with my eyes. There can be something wrong with my optic nerve or probably something inside of my brain. Um, so I had to go to a um, to a hospital to go through a couple of tests. I went to through a CT scan and an MRI, and on those uh, imaging uh, tests, it was evident that there is a small tumor inside of my brain, which was actually blocking the um, natural draining mechanism of the brain, where it uh, drains and flushes out the residues of cerebrospinal fluid, which are actually which is actually the fluid that the brain is swimming in inside of the skull. So the brain and the spinal cord are kind of wrapped, cocooned in this um, liquid, which protects the brain and the cerebrus in the uh, spinal cord and uh, feeds them. Uh, so the with that natural drain, uh, draining mechanism blocked, uh, the excess of cerebrospinal fluid it was building up inside of my skull and was causing uh, some damage on the back of my eyes, which was um, causing some small hemorrhages, which my eyes kind of projected in front of my eyes, so I was kind of seeing them. Um, so it turned out that I had to have the tumor either removed or bypassed in some way so that that fluid can drain. So uh, I had two brain surgeries. The first one was to take out a small like 
piece of the tumor for biopsy and like this was probably the uh, most exciting part because like um, exciting and relieving in the same time because like they had to figure out if it was uh, malignant or benign or if it was you know going to turn into cancer or if it would just you know stay there and not do anything but like just not do anything more than what it was already doing. So um, when they kind of, you know, did that, uh, it turned out then got to be benign. So, you know, uh, the, the tumor itself is not growing or anything like that, but it still is blocking um, the um, duct, which uh, helps drain the fluid from the brain. So now it had to be bypassed in some way and I had a VP shunt, which is a ventriculoperitoneal shunt implanted inside of my body, uh, which uh, this was on my second surgery. So the second surgery was two weeks after the first one. So um, I had very little time to recover from one to the other. And uh, during the second surgery, they implanted this device inside of my body. And like, it's actually visible. I uh, am sorry if you're triggered by, you know, viewing and seeing such things. I'm going to leave a time point at the comment section below where you can skip if you um, are triggered by such things so that, you know, you don't see it. But like, if you want, you can actually see the tube from the outside. Like it's actually visible down here. So it goes from my brain and then down to down my chest and it ends at my tummy. So basically that um, uh, tube is draining the excess of fluid, which is which was building up on my brain. And for the past 13 years, I haven't had any, you know, other problems with regards to that. Um, so sometimes nowadays I do get some horrible, horrible headaches, but it's like for just a couple of days and then I get uh, sensitive to light and to loud noises, but then it just, it just goes away on its own. Um, so the second surgery, uh, back 13 years ago was, I felt it was more like I felt, I felt it harder than the first one because like it was a lot more traumatic because it was uh, affecting a huge part of my body like my head and my brain then my neck because the um, uh, tube is going down behind my skull and down my neck and then you know my chest and my tummy because um, the uh, tube ends at the, um, my peritoneum which is the cavity where all of the um, organs of the abdomen are being kept safe. So basically, uh, that was the whole surgery. Um, uh, it, this is the, uh, I believe, uh, standard of uh, treating hydrocephalus in adults if it's uh, a, a secondary hydrocephalus, like after a trauma or due to a tumor or anything like that. And in children as well with hydrocephalus, which is you know, where children are being born with uh, this condition. This is the uh, um, standard protocol for treating. Mm, so I had this surgery, like, like the first one was on the 26th of October, 2017. Like I will never forget this date. And then the second one was on the 9th of November. And then I stayed a week more in the hospital for monitoring. So I kind of left the hospital at 15th or 16th of November and then I had to stay home for you know uh, home treatment for uh, one more month so the whole recovery and treatment period took about 45 days with the two surgeries or yeah 50 days with the two surgeries and then the recovery period which you know this period is a lot shortened nowadays I know that it is not that long the recovery is not that long and uh, people are kind of um, possible and able to get back to normal quite uh, in a short time. Um, so after I left the hospital, I was supposed to be, you know, lying and not doing, lying in bed, not doing lots of stuff. Sorry, hiccups. But uh, I was uh, actually my last year in high school and I had missed like half of the year already and it was the, like the most important year ever because I had to study for finals and then I had to go to um, university and I was applying to universities in the UK and it was so dramatic because like I was 
um, my short-term memory was greatly impaired by uh, the surgery and by all of, you know, people picking inside of my head for random stuff. Uh, so I was um, not being able to make short-term memories. Like, I would be reading something because I remember, like, as if it was yesterday, how um, I wasn't supposed to be reading because the doctors told me not to be straining my eyes. But I was so bored at the hospital that one of my friends smuggled um, the last Harry Potter book inside the hospital for me and I was like reading it and I really, to this day, I do not remember what half the book was about. Uh, like, I remember, I do know the storyline but then I do not remember anything in particular and I was like, um, okay. So it wasn't only with that Harry Potter book, it was about, you know, everything that I was reading. Like I was reading some textbooks and some stuff like that and I was like not remembering anything. And I was like, great, okay, so now we are obviously going to fail finals and then we're obviously going to fail also uh, university exams and then we're what, going to fail our life? No, no way. So I was like so determined and I was so hard working for this last year. Like I would be, you know, reading for months and months to be prepared for my exams. And then I remember sitting a TOEFL, a test of English as a foreign language exam, which is like, you need to do this if your English is, if you're, you're not a native speaker in English, in order to go to a university in a native English speaking country like the UK or the US. So I had to sit a TOEFL exam. And uh, like, I remember studying so hard for it, like, I even cannot, like, I wasn't doing anything else but studying for this exam. And all my life before that, like, all my school, high school, and uh, before that, my uh, prime school years, I was considered uh, really smart. And now this was taken away from me. And I was like, and now, yeah, <laughs> okay, so what we're doing, and why on this moment, like, worst timing ever, like, when it's actually needed. Um, and I was like really depressed because it was a part of my identity. I was uh, considering myself smart as well. Everyone was, you know, thinking that and I was like, oh, okay, so now what do we do? It's not fun anymore. So I was, I would be, you know, studying and working so hard. And funny thing is, you also cannot, like, not, I also couldn't sleep because of uh, the um, activity that was done on my brain. So I was hyperactive at moments and I couldn't really sleep, so I would read. So that was what I was doing. I would be like reading and studying at night. So I was doing, uh, I would be doing, you know, like long hours of reading and stuff like that just to be able to get um, on the level that I thought I was before and I'll be like this is so exhausting but then I remember going into that room to sit my TOEFL test and I remember thinking oh my god I'm going to fail like I'm going to fail I was feeling that I'm going I was going to fail but then I kind of smashed it you know I just killed it like out of um 120 points or something like that i had 117 or something i remember or 107 you know something really high which was not not the i wasn't even considering possible like i knew that i had to go beyond 95 or 100 to you know be able to go to university but i wasn't really thinking about going that high and i was so excited afterwards um, so that was definitely one of the things that was uh, really frustrating at first, you know, the um, issues with short-term memory and also, as I mentioned, the issue with sleeping because I wouldn't be able, like, I wasn't able to sleep at all. Like, I mean, I would be really tired, like, really, really tired and I would be dying to go to bed and then as soon as I go to bed, I really couldn't sleep. Like, I would lay in bed staring at the ceiling, you know, feeling hyperactive at moments. Um, I even got some prescription drugs to help me sleep that was that were like really weak, not that hard of um, a prescription drug. So I wasn't really willing to take them. And then I remember after two or three nights, no, more, four or five nights of not being able to sleep, I would just go and like take a pill but then I would wake up in the middle of the night again and like I couldn't I couldn't really cope. So I would just wake up and you know get out of bed and read and do 
and something to distract me. So this was what really helped me get on track, you know, reading and um, actually keeping myself focused on something and not really letting go to depression uh, because I was getting um, kind of slightly de not slightly even i was getting kind of depressed at that point already so um oh, so that was november then yeah in january i went to sit my toefl test and then after that i started feeling that you know my uh, memory and you know my yeah my memory was going back to normal my cognitive functions were all you know as before i was uh i went through that that surgery um, but then um, I had to face prom with like half of my hair gone because you know when they were going when they were doing the surgery they first went from the front side of my skull to get to the brain tumor that's it blocking the drainage to get a piece for biopsy and then they went from the back of my skull to make the to implant the shunt and I had to um, face going to prom with like half my hair gone and half grown like not even half like two or three inches of grown hair on this side and then this side is like long and um, because my natural hair is black and long and um, curly and I was like no like as a teenager who was having self-image issues already I thought that like this was just killing it like amazing so basically um i went to a hairdresser and she like did some really uh intricate things that she kind of you know used all of my other hair that i had to uh make some uh really complex hairstyle uh, so yeah that was fine as well but like the whole period of you know recovery and um having to face the fact that I was missing hair and I was having scars and you know um, uh, all of that really hurt my self-image at that point as well but then I kind of started feeling um, m you know more and more grateful for everything and then more and more strong like I was already feeling you know really resilient and strong and not uh, just on top of myself at some point because I was like oh no I've got this I've got this now it's my turn to have like get a grip on my life and you know just go ahead and you know be focused and be successful and everything so I remember uh, thinking you know uh, at some point that you know every it's not going to be okay because I don't know because I was depressed or something like that and then I th I was thinking like um, one day um, I was reading a book and I remember like I was 18 already at that point I was like okay so I'm going to believe that everything is all right as uh, someone the, a really young child believes in unicorns like you you just do like and whatever you say and whatever anyone anyone says like you know that the unicorns do exist up to this day like i do believe that unicorns exist i have a huge unicorn collection like uh there is my narwhal here which you know is um, a dolphin with a horn which is actually a unicorn per se so i do have a huge unicorn collection in my home that i keep and like everyone keeps giving me unicorns because i do believe that like i know that unicorns exist like ever seen agnes from the speakable me there you go so uh i was like okay so i'm really going to develop like this unicorn mindset when like despite all the odds and everything like I 100% believe that everything is going to be fine and everything is going to be okay and everything is meant to be and there is a purpose for everything so everything is just going to be fine and I kind of developed this and I'm I've been you know using this uh, and you know yeah I've been using this all my life and it's been of a great favor like it's helped me achieve so much it's helped me you know grow it's helped me be positive and go through life and be like not um, the person that has this condition not the person that has brain tumor or the person that has you know hydrocephalus or that has um, some um, 
impairing condition or something like that but just simply Danny who is like really positive and really killing it and like really being um, Danny who has a grip on life and stuff like that so I really hope that you know if you can take one thing away from this video it's it is this like I'm 100% sure that everything is going to be fine and I want you to know that everything is going to be fine like no matter where you're in life if like you're just having the time of your life or if everything is cool then great I really do appreciate you and I uh, wish you all the best and all the luck and I really really strongly want you to know that you deserve it and everything is going to be this way just forever but if you're in a you know bad place or something like that don't worry everything is going to be just fine thank you for watching and during on my next video i will be sharing with you how i uh, was uh, going through university i'm going to be sharing with you some really really um not you know some facts that are really personal and i wouldn't be like willing uh, to share that much but yeah i'll be sharing them with you and i'll be talking to you about my life in university and how um i uh you know was able to do all the crazy university stuff like the heavy drinking and you know uh, challenges and stuff like that so you know um, being living with hydrocephalus I thought that this wouldn't be me this wouldn't be my reality but then everything turned out just okay and I'll be talking to you guys more about this on my next video um, I'm glad you were here please if you have any comments or anything that you'd like to say leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you guys next time